This is only the first step. But it is a first step that guarantees while you take the second step and move towards a comprehensive agreement, Iran's fundamentals of its program are not able to progress. Fordow, Natanz, Iraq, and other centrifuge and other things that matter. So that is a critical first step. And I will say to all of you that as we conclude this first round of negotiation, with the beginning of the possibility of a much broader accomplishment down the road, it is our responsibility to be as firmly committed to diplomacy and as relentless in our resolve over the years as we have been to bring the concerted pressure that brought us to this moment. For the Iranian government, it's their responsibility to recognize that this first phase is a very simple test. Many times, Iran, I think you heard uh, the foreign minister here tonight reiterate that they have a peaceful program. That's their only intention. Folks, it is not hard to prove peaceful intent if that's what you want to do. We are anxious to try to make certain that this deal ultimately will do exactly that, prove it. And I will just say, <clears throat> finally, uh, I know that there are those who will assert that this deal is imperfect. Well, they too bear a responsibility, and that is to tell people what the better alternative is. Some might say we should simply continue to increase pressure, just turn up the screws, continue to put the sanctions on, and somehow that's going to push Iran towards capitulation or collapse. Not by any interpretation that we have from all the experts and all of the input that we have and from all of the countries, the P5 plus one that took place in this today. None of them believe that would be the outcome. Instead, we believe that while we are engaged in that effort, our, Iran's program would actually march forward. It would gain. And while it gains, it would become more dangerous in the region. And countries like Israel and the, the Emirates, other people in the region who are threatened, would in fact be more threatened. So we believe that you would wind up with an Iran with bigger stockpiles, with more advanced centrifuges, and more progress at pursuing a plutonium track. And President Obama believes that doesn't benefit anybody. In 1973, 19, excuse me, in 2003, when the Iranians made an offer to the former administration with respect to their nuclear program, there were 164 centrifuges. That offer was not taken. Subsequently, sanctions came in, and today there are 19,000 centrifuges and growing. So people have a responsibility to make a judgment about this choice. And I am comfortable, as is President Obama, that we have made the right choice for how you proceed to get a complete agreement.